My son, Rory, developed 104 fever and it wouldn't come down. We brought him to the hospital. By the time we were going in the door with him, he was leaning on me, he was so weak. Katie had called me crying. It was the worst she'd ever felt, nauseous, vomiting. I met her and her husband at the emergency room. Emily went into the hospital for a planned surgery. About eight days after Emily started developing a high fever, I could tell she was in pain, discomfort. But everybody kept telling me that it was just a stomach virus and not to worry. But I kept thinking, there's something wrong, there's something wrong. Her heart rate went up to 180 beats per minute. Her fingers and feet were very cold to the touch. His nose started turning a little bit black. And I said to one of the, the doctors, is it gonna be okay? And he said, I don't know. The critical care nurse came out and she said, you need to prepare for the worst. It was just that quickly, it just ravaged her body. And now she's gone. Rory died because of the fact that nobody identified his infection. Unfortunately, she passed away from sepsis. Sepsis is a national problem. You look across the U.S., there's a million individuals per year with a mortality rate of over 25% who have severe sepsis or shock. Sepsis is a very complex syndrome. In response to an infection, cells that would normally do nothing more than destroy bacteria start attacking normal cells. The attack itself spins out of control and begins to attack the body's normal organs. When people think of sepsis, they have to initiate treatment with fluids, antibiotics, and oxygen. For each hour that you wait to start antibiotics, the more likely the patient is to die. If I thought that Emily was in any danger, I would have jumped up and down and screamed. If I would have known what I know today about sepsis, I would have fought for her. I didn't even know to fight for her. If anyone, anybody had said, could this be sepsis, he'd be alive today. All he needed was IV fluids and antibiotics, and he would be alive today. I met the Stauntons soon after their son Rory passed away. We were world leaders in understanding the septic response, and they came to us looking for some guidance. They wanted to lead a crusade so that it wouldn't be repeated uh, what happened to their son. Their mission was to raise sepsis awareness and to change the way sepsis is treated in the United States and the world. Michael Dowling put together a group of medical professionals from Northwell. I found everybody had great empathy, but also made me feel like, yes, we can make a difference. We helped them understand that protocols, guidelines, etc., had the potential to make a difference. I came out of every meeting feeling like I was dealing with the gold standard of sepsis care. What we've done at Northwell is put in place a clinical algorithm. It's clear, it's concise, and the clinicians who are encountering patients know what to do in as short a time period as possible. Michael Dowling made sepsis a major clinical priority for Northwell because he recognized that it would save lives. Ryan just kept throwing up and I was worried about dehydration. He was really just not himself at all. When Northwell heard the symptoms that Ryan was having, Northwell put a team in the ambulance to come get Ryan, and that's when major treatment started. It was 24 hours a day, nonstop, two nurses, the doctors were just on top of him. And finally on day three, it worked. I'm just blessed that, that they really had these protocols because no parent should ever have to bury a child. The level of care that they gave me lets me be able to do the things that I enjoy today. We have reduced the mortality rate from sepsis in this health system by 70%. We've made lots of progress, but you should never sit back and say, I'm now comfortable. You've got to keep moving it forward and building upon what's known already and then figure out better ways the quality of care and the attention that the team at Northwell Hospital gave my son is the reason why he's alive. If hospitals throughout the country adopted the same protocols as Northwell, we would potentially save hundreds of thousands of lives. We've been one of the leaders in driving these changes. It's an institutional fundamental change to the way we look at infection. Things will not be the same again as a result.